So regarding the compression test, I guess what I'll do is first I'll do a cold test on it. So that will be a true comparison to the previous two that we did. Then after that, we'll do a warm compression test. So that'll be four total. Again, this is mainly just for my own curiosity. If you didn't see the earlier videos, uh, the compression is actually a little high on this tractor. So the reason I'm checking it more thoroughly than I normally do is that when I first acquired this tractor, it was very hard to turn the motor over, both by hand and with the starter. It has loosened up since then a little bit. All right, the battery's hooked up, we're ready to go here. All right, so now we'll get a cold start. We'll let the engine run for a while, get warm, and shut it back down, and do one final compression test. So I let the tractor run for about 15 minutes. It's nice and warm now. And again, this is just for my own curiosity. I'm gonna do a final compression test here while it's hot, and then we'll move on. If you haven't seen the previous videos, uh, the starter originally did not work. I took it apart. I found some uh, broken pieces in the drive gear assembly, replaced that, cleaned it all up, put it back together, and it spun the engine fine, just like it did here with the compression test with all the spark plugs out. But then when I got all the spark plugs back in, it didn't seem to have enough power to turn the engine over. So this will be the final test for the starter as well, even though we don't need it because I'm gonna leave it as a magneto ignition hand crank tractor. I'm not gonna use a battery at all. This also is just for curiosity, will the starter actually turn the motor over now that it's been sort of broken in and warm and, and uh, oiled up? Wow. Not only does it crank it over, but it spins it over fast. So even though I'm not gonna use the starter, it's really good news to know that it works and it works well. All right, I also went around it and hit all the uh, Zerk points that I could find. At least on the front half of the tractor. Another thing I did here, just because I had it, I went ahead and put the uh, lid on the battery box and the side panel. And of course there's no battery in here whatsoever, it's just empty, but uh, looks nice and clean like that.
Yeah, virtually no grease in this one either. Look at this. Well, that's not just the tire that's out around. It is a little bit loose on the hub there. Let me take the cap back off, take the cotter pin out, and tighten that nut down a little bit, see if that does anything for it. Well, I took the cotter pin out here. Look how loose this nut is. We've got my inch and a quarter inch wrench here. Let me just snug this down a little bit and put the cotter pin back in and see if that straightens out the wheel rotation at all. Yeah, that was pretty loose. Well, it tightened up the wheel on the hub, which is good. There's no more wobble there, but it did not straighten out the travel at all when it's spinning. So that's definitely a bent rim. Well, that front right wheel might concern me if this was a race car, but it's not. It's just an old tractor. It'll be just fine. Well, I'm glad I changed the oil here. I was almost considering not doing it, but it's really not a good idea to run a tractor on unknown oil with an unknown age. It's a lot darker and thicker than it looked on the dipstick. Going with a Napa 7011, and it came with a new seal. Our local garbage dump has an oil depository. So I just save my old oil up to maybe five or 10 gallons and then I take it to the dump and only cost a few dollars to uh, dispose of it. And it's much easier than trying to pawn it off on the AutoZone people or something like that. You add the engine oil right there, right down the top of the breather inlet. And it even says oil on the lid there. If I remember correctly, this tractor takes, I think four to five quarts of uh, engine oil. So we'll add a little bit and then check it as we go.
That looks about right. So let's start this thing up, um, let it warm up, let the oil get good and circulated, and then we'll check the levels again and move on from there. I could use maybe another half a quart. And rather than just drain the transmission differential oil, I'm just going to uh, take a sample of it. So I just want to take a peek in here before I commit to spending 70 bucks on some new oil. I'm trying to get way down deep in there to get a good sample. some new stuff for comparison. That looks pretty terrible. So, uh, well, that's why we check these things. It's been sitting for a very long time. It's probably even some water in there because it usually doesn't get that milky color unless there is some water in there. This stuff's so nasty, I should probably even flush the uh, system after I get the oil drained, maybe like add diesel to it and drive it around for a little while, get all this nastiness out, drain it again, and then add the oil. Well, normally draining the transmission differential oil from these tractors is a pretty simple thing, but and this entire frame apparatus here is pretty much right in the way. So let me crawl under there and show you what we're dealing with. There are three drain plugs, one there, one there, and one right back there. I'm gonna drain the, the middle one first. That's at the lowest point. And that should get most of it out. And then we'll drain these secondary ones also and get the rest out. And one other thing I noticed while I was down here. That's some sort of access hole for the axle. We got some wasp nests up in there. And then on this side, we've got some sort of a nest material up in there. So, See how easy that is to get out. Oh man. Oh my God, it's packed in there. This is gonna take more work. I gotta get out of here. Well, I have more work to do with that nonsense, but in the meantime, I'm gonna start draining this transmission oil. I'm not gonna be able to get the camera down there, so I'm just gonna do this and then report back. Well, here's what came out of it. This is a magnet. I'm just gonna stick in there and see if anything comes up on it. Little bit of uh, metal dust or clutch material or something. I think this oil has been in there a long time. 
So let's get the uh, transmission and rear end filled up with diesel. And we'll run it around and see how much of this garbage we can get out of here. Pretty much full. Let's let that diesel sit in there all night and then we'll come out in the morning and uh, start it up, drive it around, cycle it through the transmission and get it drained out. So this is the left axle of tube housing right here. The hole that was jammed with the nest material was on the bottom of this um, down under there. But there's holes all over the place. There's a couple there, you know, it's open on top. Um, there's even one in the back. So it's all open in there for a couple different reasons. Underneath in here is where the brake drum is. There's a collar around this side of the brake drum and that collar has a set screw to keep it in place on the axle. So you could get to that set screw from that access hole down there. And that access hole probably also acts as drainage for rain because this is all open. So if you were using this in the rain, water would definitely get down inside there. So inside here is an axle, you know, roughly that big around, give or take. But the rest of this is all open in there. So this is kind of like a perfect little hotel for mice and insects and things because it's such a large cavity in there and it's all protected they you know they're safe from uh, predators and and the elements and everything else anyway i used a pick on both sides i was able to get the pick up in there pretty well and grab just about all of it and then i used compressed air to blow out uh quite a bit more and then followed that up with some brake clean shot that around all up inside there and got some more stuff to drain out and they're pretty much clear now the last thing I want to do today is change the oil in the final drive. And if you did not see the previous video, when I checked the oil, it's pretty much uh, like molasses. This is the pan right here. There's no drain on this pan at all. This is a plug uh, to check and fill the oil. And the stuff is real thick and nasty in there. So what I'm going to do is just remove the whole pan, clean it out, and reinstall it with uh, a new gasket 
and some fresh oil. It's probably going to be a messy job. And I'm not sure how easy these bolts back here will be able to get to behind here. But let's give it a try. It looks like maybe those are 9 sixteenths. Oh, well, there's one. All right, I got all the uh, bolts out of the pan here. It took about 15 minutes probably. It's a little awkward to get up behind there, but it wasn't too bad. Let's see if I can give it a whack with this mallet. Let's see if it'll break loose. All right, I got it broken loose. Should come off the rest of the way. Yeah, a little messy. Well, what do you think? Never been changed? I'm not sure how to tackle this, to be honest with you, but we'll just do a little bit at a time. Oh, man. All right, here's the new gasket. Looks like a good quality one. The uh, straight side goes on the inside of the tractor and the rounded side goes towards the outside of the wheel. Yeah, I'm just gonna put a bead of sealant on this. I guess it's more like a smear than a bead. gasket on top and then do the same thing to the top surface of the gasket and reinstall it. All right, let's get this back on the tractor. We'll get it cinched down, and then uh, after I get the other one done, we'll fill them up with oil. In the process of taking the left pan off, unfortunately broke a bolt there. I've already got it uh, punched in the center. I'm gonna try to drill it out and use an easy out. And yeah, keep your fingers crossed. Well, it's the next day. I could not get that bolt out no matter what I tried. So I had to drill and tap it. And uh, I think we're ready to move forward again. All right, I've got both pans back on. Now just need to remove these pipe plugs on both sides, fill the uh, pans with uh, gear oil, and uh, we're done. This is the gear oil I used in the final drives. I didn't capture much of that on camera because the quarters were just too tight up in there for me and the oil and the wrenches and the camera. But I uh, got it done. That was supposed to take about two hours, ended up taking 
about a day and a half total because of that broken bolt. So between the mouse houses and the wasp nests and uh, messiness of changing the final drive oil, I had to uh, pressure wash the floor in my shop and then had to pressure wash the rear of the tractor. So after seven videos and a bunch of work, I'm finally gonna give this tractor the green light to go ahead and start using it. So I hope you stay tuned for the next video. That will be part eight. And that will be all about the sickle bar.